Hi, it's Ben from Digital Mastery, and we're going to take a look at how I took an image from the straight out of capture uh, RAW file to a finished image using only Adobe Lightroom Classic. And just so you know, the same adjustments are also found in Adobe Camera Raw. So if you don't use Lightroom, you could make the same transformation using just Adobe Camera Raw. Uh, so let's dive in and see what was done to really transform this image. Here you can see the before and the left. That's the raw capture straight out of the camera. And on the right, you see my end result. And so let's just take that image and work it. So I'm gonna grab this guy and first, I'm going to, over the develop module, I, I'm just gonna reset my settings. But here I have straight out of camera as a snapshot. And let's just look at the images that I captured at the time I was out shooting. Uh, so here we go. And in this case, I had uh, a general situation where there was a huge brightness range in this scene. And I thought about blowing out the background to solid white, and then that would bring out a lot of detail here. But these little chicks were walking in and out of the sun, and I didn't want the detail on them to be blown out. So I was experimenting with my exposure, and I started out by trying to get this simple background, and that was to get a little higher and tilt my camera down. So you couldn't see what was off here in the distance. But I felt that really limited the depth that was in the picture, and I felt like I was not quite at a standing height, but I wasn't at uh, these guys' height. So after a while, I started getting lower, and I tilted my camera up, and that's when I started getting what I liked, which was a lot of depth in the photograph, and I felt like I was really at these guys' level a lot more. So I worked the scene a little bit until I got it to a point where I found I got an okay capture where I liked kind of the expression on the main bird that's here and just kept going. And I think that might have been the one right there that I ended up adjusting. But I just kept going and just, you just can't anticipate what they're going to do. But that was the full extent of the captures that I ended up uh, creating. This image right here is the one that I ended up processing mainly because I liked the overall stance here. And also I liked this little guy so I could have another focus. So let's head over to the develop module. I just typed the letter D and over here let's work the image. So I usually, my, my mindset is to do the biggest problem first and then just do that process over and over again until you run out of problems or patience. In this case, the biggest problem to my eye is just the lack of shadow detail. So I'm gonna come over here and bring the shadow slider way up. Bring it really to a high setting. Then I wanna control how big of a difference there is between the really bright stuff and the really dark stuff. And what controls that difference is contrast. If you increase contrast, you're gonna get a greater difference between bright and dark. I want the opposite of that, so I'm gonna bring contrast down. Just a little bit to, to uh, mellow that out. But at this stage, I find this background to be just too bright. So I'm gonna see if I can tone it down by going to my highlight slider and bringing that down. In fact, I think I'm gonna bring it all the way down. So then I'm starting to see a good amount of detail in general behind them, so my eye's not drawn to that really bright area. But after doing that, I find our main subject over here is looking pretty dull, and I'd like it to start to pop a bit more. And to do that, I'm gonna come over here and bring up clarity. So we'll bring it up until we no longer have a dull looking uh, area. Another thing I might do is click in this area to zoom up so I can see the fine detail and then bring up texture to see if I can bring out the little details in every little uh, part of our main subject there. Then I'll click again to zoom out. But now I want it to be more colorful in here where my main subject is. So I'm gonna come over and adjust vibrance. As I bring it up, you'll see the main bird there and everything else as well becoming more and more colorful. I think somewhere in that general area, I'm starting to like the color in here. But once I get the color to be rather vivid, then I might need to look at my white balance a bit and just move it around, see, make the image too yellow, make it too blue, and then find a good balance in between those. 
somewhere in that general range and do the same with tint push it way one way so it's too green way the other so it's too magenta and then find a good compromise in between and I think I ended up somewhere in this general range although that's still too blue so let's bring this up I'm liking it somewhere in there then at this point what I'm going to do is start fine-tuning the individual colors because if I look at the color of the wall that's over here and the background elements over here the greens they're things that are drawing my eye but that's not where I want them to go so I'm going to come down here to an area called HSL and expand that I'm going to set this to saturation so I'm going to control how colorful areas are and I'm going to start off with the greens because the greens in the background are rather distracting I'll bring this down until those greens are no longer really pulling my eye away from the main subject and I think somewhere around this general area now my eyes not being pulled quite as much up there but I do see some other colors over in here and in the background that are kind of blues, aquas, that kind of thing. I could grab this little donut shaped doodad and click on like the wall over here. And if I were to adjust that, then I can pull this down and it's going to move more than one slider if needed. But I'm just chilling out some of that color. But those colors are not found in my main subject. So I think it works out just fine then I want to get your attention near the middle of the image and not so much on the outer edges so I'm going to go further down here to an area called effects and this is where we have post crop vignetting whenever I use this I almost always set this menu to color priority otherwise when we darken the edges of the photograph the colors start looking a little weird and these other sliders won't be available until I move the amount so I'm just going to move the amount down the tiniest amount to start with and that's only to make these other sliders available then most of the time I take the feather setting and I turn it all the way up I max it out that's how soft of a transition we're going to end up with and after doing that when I move these other sliders that are in here I hold down the option key that's alt in windows and if I do it acts as if my amount slider was maxed out to hundred percent of how far it could be moved and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over here and adjust my midpoint until I like it. And I'll adjust my roundness. And right now we have no roundness, but I'll bring it down, bring it back up and see if I can find a setting that I like. Somewhere around there. And then at this point, I think it's about time to darken the image. So let's bring this down and just decide how far can I move this before it's overly noticeable. Well, we got enough shadowy stuff in the rest of the image that I think I can get away with having it down quite far, maybe about like that. The only problem with that is there are some highlights near the edges of the picture and they look artificial if they get too dark. It makes it so it's obvious that you've darkened the edge. And therefore we have this slider called highlights and I'm just going to bring it up to let some of those highlights break through so they're not being darkened quite as much. And so I'll rest sometime around there. Now at this point I was just trying to get the overall image to not look too bad but in the process I really thought this background was too colorful and was too bright and I thought our main subject matter was not bright enough. And so the only problem was that in order to brighten this area if I was just using the sliders here under the basic tab we're going to end up brightening the dark areas on the right side as well and I don't want to do that and if I tone down this area I might end up toning down these highlights in the foreground and I don't want to do that and therefore I went to the adjustment brush and in the adjustment brush I isolated various areas and I just want to show you what did I isolate and what were the sliders that I used to change so what I did is after adjusting each area I saved a snapshot because I knew I was probably going to use this as an example and so in here I'm going to click on this snapshot right here and first let me make sure because I think I had some um, cropping applied as well so I'm going to click right here and just say global settings there you do see a crop uh, that just came in if I choose undo and that was just to get rid of some of that window on the truck that's in the very far distance and to get a little closer to the uh, chicks that are there 
Now we can go in here and let's see what I did to make the bird pop. Well, I used the adjustment brush and I painted over the bird. And if I hover over this little dot, you'll see exactly what it is that I isolated. And it's by no means a very perfect um, mask that's there, but it's close enough. And if I click on that, you can see exactly the sliders that I used for this. What I wanted to do is get the brightest part of the bird to be even brighter. So the first thing that I did is I adjusted the whites and I brought it up as high as it would possibly go. The whites ends up adjusting the absolute brightest part of that area. But that wasn't enough. So I came over here to highlights and I pushed it. And in the end, I pushed it as far as I possibly could. But even that was not enough. So I brought up my exposure a little bit. And the combination of those three sliders is what really brightened this up. Then the other thing I did was I brought saturation down a bit. So there's not as big of a difference between bright and dark in there. And that often is something that'll also help bring out some of the detail. But I really wanted the detail to pop out. So that's why over here I brought up texture and I brought up clarity. And in fact, yeah, I forgot that I did it on the, the bird in an isolated fashion. So I probably shouldn't be applying texture to the entire picture because I don't want to bring out the fine details in the background. I only want to bring it out here. And so when I was working on the main image, I should probably bring my texture back down to zero because this is what's bringing out the detail in that bird. Clarity is doing the same as I brought it up. It made this uh, pop as well. Then one other thing, your eye will be drawn to things that are colorful and I didn't want this main guy here to compete as much with the background. So I cranked up the saturation a bit. If you want to see what that did before and after, I'll turn off this little light switch and you'll see what it looked like before painting it in. Then I'll turn it back on and show you what it looked like afterwards. But then all I did was come in here and I chose new up here at the top of my uh, adjustment brush settings and I started working on another area. At this point, I liked how bright it was kind of down in this general area, but I found that the head looked rather dull, especially the eyeball. So the next thing that I did in here was to make that head pop. And so let's see what was done. I'll hover over this little pin and you can see which area of the image I worked on <clears throat> in order to get it. So I was able to get a mask that was relatively accurate like that. I used the setting down here called auto mask. When auto mask is turned on and you click on your picture, you see a little crosshair in the middle of your brush. It tries to only mask the area that is touching the crosshair. Anything that's the same brightness, the same color. And wherever it changes radically in brightness or color, it stops masking. And so that allowed me to click on these red areas in here and it didn't select the background so much because it was quite different from red. Then if you take a look at the changes that I made, they were quite similar to what I'd ended up doing to the main body of that bird. And that is I brought the whites up and that again works on the brightest portion of that area. And I also brought up highlights. Highlights doesn't work on the absolute brightest. It works on things that are a little bit darker than that. And that I cranked up. In this particular area, I increased contrast. That gave me a greater difference between the black of the eyes and the lightness that was surrounding it. And I also made they had a little bit more saturated so the red that's in there would pop out. Then the next thing I did was I clicked new once again and this time I decided to start working on the background. We had our main subject popping out and now I wanted to recess the background so it wasn't as noticeable. So let me click on this next snapshot here and you'll see that background really mellowed out. If I hover over the pin for that adjustment, you'll see how much of the image I isolated. And if I click on the pin, you can see the settings that I used. The main thing that I did is two things. I adjusted the highlight slider and I brought it all the way down to try to make it so it wasn't overly bright in the background because your eye is going to be drawn to anything that's bright. 
The other thing that I did is I brought saturation down considerably so your eye wouldn't be drawn to the color that's in there. Instead, the most colorful area of the image might be my main subject matter, at least when I'm done. After that, I decided to work on other areas and at the very top of the image, you can see a wheel in the white body of part of a truck that's in the center top of the image. So here I have another adjustment and that one, I don't know that it did all that much, but if I look, it's just those really bright areas. And if I click, all it's doing is bringing the highlights down and the contrast a little bit. But I don't think you can notice a huge change there. I'm just trying to make sure that I've maxed out that because I would rather have the bright area of the image down in here where it calls your attention in the middle of the photo and then you drift over than having it up here at the very top. Then I wanted your attention and not just go to one main subject that's in here. I wanted to pick one of these little chicks to have your eye go to. And I probably could have picked this guy, but they're so close to each other. I decided to spread it out a little bit more so you might explore more of the photo. And I chose this little guy. So if I go to the next snapshot that I saved, you'll see that it brightens up that guy. And if I hover over that adjustment point, you can see which portion of the image it isolated and you can see it's not that precise of a masking job. I didn't do anything with the feet. If I click on it, you can see the adjustment that I've made. And of course, it's me bringing the whites up almost as high as it goes, which is going to brighten the brightest part of that area. And I ended up bringing down contrast a little bit. The other thing I could have done is bring up my uh, texture a little bit to get the fine detail in that guy to pop out. Then after that, I've gotten most of the image done, but if I just glance at the picture, my eye is drawn to a few areas where I don't want it to be. In the main areas that bother me is I do explore the areas over in here because of these little colorful leaves, but because it's so out of focus and everything, I don't spend much time and it just gets me to kind of wander back. But my eye does go right over here where there's this bright yellow area and that's pulling me away from my main subject. There's a few other little yellow areas there and there's a red kind of leaf here. So if I go to my next snapshot and I click on it, you're going to find that those areas mellow out. And if I hover over that particular point, you can see where I've isolated things. And because those things have somewhat hard edges, that means I had auto mask turned on and auto mask helped me isolate those particular colors. And the only thing I did to them was I brought the saturation down about half of its normal saturation. So it's nowhere near as colorful. So if I were to take this image and get out of my adjustment brush and then go to the bottom of my screen here and click on this icon, that's going to allow me to see before and after. And you can see how dull the original picture was. And when you look at the original picture, look at where your eye looked. Usually your eye is going to look at the area of highest contrast. The area of highest contrast is where here we have a bright area touching a really dark area. So your eye likely went somewhere over here. Although up here is an, also an area of high contrast. So your eye might have either gone here or here, and then it might have started exploring the rest. If you look at our end result, where does my eye go? Well, my eye goes to the color that's over here and the difference in contrast in this area right here. But that's a central portion of the image. And then it comes right over to my subject. It explores some of the surroundings, but it's drawn right there. And so if we look at just the end result, this is, I think, much better than the original capture. And at this point, I thought I had an all right looking image. So hopefully that gives you a sense for how I transform a raw capture into a final result. And it really depends on the image as to how much time and effort I'm going to put into it. But in general, I start working on the biggest problem first and then I repeat that process. Just asking myself again, what's the biggest problem until I run out of problems or I run out of patience. If you want to learn a lot more about Photoshop and Lightroom and even photography, be sure to check out my other website, which is at mastersacademy.com. I'll see you next time.